Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Toolkit RC M6 Multifunctional Charger. This ultra small device is going to enable you to charge your batteries either at home or on the go and also perform other tasks which I'm going to show you in this video. The M6 charger is available in two colors, black and white. Inside its box you can find the user manual, the charger which as you can see is very small and can fit in the palm of my hand and you're also getting a USB to USB cable which is going to enable you to update the firmware of the charger. In terms of features, the M6 is very similar to the M8 which I've recently reviewed. The main differences between the models are that first of all the M6 is much smaller than the M8. It features a 1.8 inch color LCD screen whereas the M8 features a bigger 2.2 inch black and white LCD screen and just like the M8 the screen of the M6 is not a touch screen and operating the charger is done using these capacitive buttons. In addition, the M6 operates on a DC battery between 7 to 28 volts, whereas the M8 can accept between 7 to 30 volts. The M6 charger supports lipo batteries between 2 to 6 cells, whereas the M8 charger supports lipo batteries between 2 to 8 cells. And finally, the maximum charging power of the M6 is 150 watts or 10 amperes, and the maximum charging power of the M8 is 15 amperes or 300 watts. In terms of dimensions, as I mentioned before, the M6 is very small and weighs only 81.5 grams, so it's about 60 grams lighter than the M8 charger. The outer dimensions of the M6 charger are 69.5, by 50 by 25.6 millimeters, so the charger is very small and it makes it travel friendly. On the left side of the M6, we can find a male XT60 battery connector. The supported voltage is between 7 to 28 volts. Next to it, you can find a servo connector and a USB port that is used both for charging external devices and updating the firmware of the charger. On the right side of the charger, we can find the output ports. So over here, you can find a balance plug that supports up to six cells and next to it, a male XT60 connector. On the back of the charger, we can find the fan and also these kickstands, which are going to enable you to operate the charger more conveniently when placed on your table. After connecting a battery, the charger is going to be turned on and you're going to get to this main menu. Navigating between the options is done using the up and down arrows. If you'd like to select an option, you need to press the run button. And if you want to go back, you need to press the button on the top. Overall, these buttons perform okay, but sometimes there are some glitches. The main function that you are probably going to use the most is the charger option. Inside, you can define three profiles. So for example, if you'd like to add a new battery, you just need to press the OK button. And if you'd like to delete this profile, you will need to long press it. The supported batteries are LiPo, LiHV, LiFE, Lithium Ion, NIMH, and PB batteries. I'm going to show you the LiPo options. The end voltage can be set all the way down to 4.15 volts and all the way up to 4.25 volts. The number of cells can be determined automatically when you are going to connect the balance plug of the charged battery and if you'd like you can also set it manually between 1 to 6 cells. The charge current can be set all the way down to 0.1 amperes and all the way up to 10 amperes. The maximum discharging current is 2 amperes and you can set it all the way down to 0.1 amperes. Next, you can select the task that you would like to perform. First of all, you can charge the battery. It's going to prompt you that it's going to charge it to 4.2 volts, which we've predefined before. You can also discharge the battery, and it's going to tell you that it's going to discharge it to 3.5 volts by default. If you'd like, you can change this value all the way down to 3 volts and all the way up to 4 volts. These values are, of course, per cell. Finally, you can also perform a storage charge. So when you select it, you can select the storage value per cell. And this value can be set between 
3.95 volts per cell all the way down to 3.75 volts per cell. So now I'm going to plug a 6S like a battery and try to charge it. So we're going to select charge. It's a LiPo battery. Since it discovered the number of cells automatically, you can see that now it's going to charge the battery to 25.2 volts, which is 4.2 volts per cell. After pressing OK, the charging procedure is going to start. We can see over here the voltage of the battery that is powering the charger. Over here a timer, the internal temperature of the charger. Over here you can monitor the voltage of each cell the total voltage of the connected battery, the charging ampere. Over here you can see an indication of the charging procedure. So you can see that the battery is charged to 49% and the charging power is 48.3 watts. Pressing either the up or down buttons is going to show us the resistance of each cell. Over here you can see the type of battery that is being charged, its number of cells, if you'd like to stop the charging procedure, you can simply press the return button. It's going to prompt you that it's going to stop working. And after selecting OK, the charging procedure is going to be stopped. If you'd like to go back, again, press the return button and we are going to return to this charging screen. The next option in the main menu is the measure function. Over here, we can test and also balance batteries and also test PWM, PPM, and SBUS radio signals. So now let's start with the BAT option. After pressing OK, we're going to get to this menu so we can see the voltage of each connected cell. You can also see the charging percentage of the battery, the total volts, the delta, which is the highest difference between the cells, and also the temperature of the charger. Under modes, we can find two options. You can test the internal resistance, and when it's set to voltage, you can balance the cells of the battery. The next options are PWM, PPM, and SBUS, and these are going to enable you to test the appropriate signals. In order to use these features, you're going to need to connect a receiver to the servo connector, which is located over here. I'm going to test it with the M8 charger, which is going to generate an SBUS signal. So now I've got it connected. And I'm going to get back to the measure option. Choose SBUS. And you can see that channel number three is at 1005. And if I'm going to change it on the M8, you can see that it's being changed over here. The next option is the output option, which will enable you to output either PWM, PPM, and SBAT signals, and also use this small charger as a power supply. So the first option is power. After selecting it, you can select between typical pre-settings. And if you're going to set it to custom, you can choose the output voltage. It can be set all the way down to one volt and all the way up to 28 volts. After selecting the voltage, the output current is going to be updated accordingly since the maximum output power of this charger is 150 watts. And just as a reminder, the watts is the outcome of the multiplication of the voltage by the ampere. So when it's set to 28 volts, the maximum current is going to be 5.3 amperes and you can set it all the way down to 1 ampere. And if you're going to set the output voltage to 12 volts, the maximum current is going to be 10 amperes. After selecting these options, you can select start and the XT60 battery connector over here is going to output the power that you selected. Under the settings, you can see the timer, the internal voltage of the battery, the input voltage, the output voltage, the output ampere, and the output power, which is the multiplication of the voltage in the ampere. Pressing either the back or the selection button is going to stop the DC output. This feature can be useful, of course, to power things up and also can double act the smoke stopper since the ampere is being limited. So now, for example, I'm going to power this quadcopter and no harm is going to be done since the ampere is limited to one ampere. You can see that now the quadcopter is powered up and if I'm going to press stop, you can see that now it was turned off. 
In addition to the power supply, we can also generate PWM, PPM, and SBUS signals. So now let's choose, for example, SBUS. And I'm going to change this value over here. And you can see that it's being changed on the MA charger, which is set to the measure mode. Moving on, under settings, you can find the following options. You can set the lowest input value, which can be set all the way up to 28 volts and all the way down to 7 volts. You can set the maximum input power between 200 watts all the way down to 30 watts. The safe temperature can be set to in between 60 degrees Celsius up to 80 degrees Celsius. The safe time can be set between 60 to 300 minutes. And if you'd like, you can also turn this option off. The discharge mode can be either set to internal or to recycle. If it's going to be set to internal, it's going to use its internal resistors in order to discharge the connected battery. And if it's going to be set to recycle, the amount of power that is going to be drawn from the connected battery is going to be returned to the battery which powers the charger. Next, you can set the idle beep to 1 to up to 30 minutes. And if you'd like, you can also turn this feature off. If it's going to be set, for example, to 1 minute, after 1 minute that the charger is not going to be in use, it's going to start alerting you. Next, you can set the SBUS value. By default, it's set to width. You can set the backlight of the charger. So now the screen is practically off and the maximum value is 10. You can also change the tone of the buzzer. Now I'm going to turn it off. So we finally got rid of it. You can set the team style. The default one is the dark mode. And if you'd like, you can also change it to this option. Next, you can set the language. So you can change between the following options. And if you'd like to restore the default settings, you will have to press default, press OK again, and now everything was restored to the default values. Now before wrapping up this review, there is another feature that I would like to show you. You can also access the battery measure option by connecting a battery to the output port. So you can see now the battery is connected. The charger was powered up and as you can see we can do balance charge of course if we are going to plug the balance connector and we can also monitor the state of each connected cell. You're not going to be able to access any of the other options so as you can see the screen is locked to the battery measure option. So if you'd like to simply check a status of the battery you can connect it and it's going to display its total voltage over here. The firmware updating procedure of the M6 charger is identical to the M8. So in order to update it, you will need to use the provided USB cable and connect the charger to your computer. It's going to be recognized as an external drive. And then all you have to do is to follow the upgrade instructions. You have two options. You can either perform an automatic upgrade using the batch file, or you can do a manual upgrade. Then all you have to do is just to simply delete the app.upg which is located on the toolkit drive and replace it with the latest firmware and I'm going to leave a link down below to toolkit RC's website where you can download firmware updates. Now by the way in my experience this upgrading procedure only works on a PC as I tried it on my Mac and the charger wasn't recognized as an external drive so maybe that's an issue that they're going to solve or maybe simply Mac is not supported. The USB port is of course also used to charge external devices and as you can see I'm charging the DJI Osmo Action camera right now at 1.34 amperes and according to the specs the maximum current is 2.1 ampere. In order to charge external devices all you have to do is to plug the USB cable and you don't have to do anything on the charger itself. So overall, I can tell you that I was impressed with the M8 charger and now I'm even more impressed with the M6 charger. And the thing I really like about this charger is its size. It's really small. You can just put it on your backpack and forget about it. And then whenever you need to charge your mobile devices, you can simply use it. And of course, you can also use a bigger battery or you can connect it to your car battery in order to charge your batteries on the go. So priced at around $27, I think that it gives you an extremely good value for your money. And if you're on the market for a small compact charger, 
you should definitely check it out. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the M6 or even the M8 charger, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.